Okay, we're going to be talking about the faculty guide and semester at a glance for docu documentary and narrative film projects. Uh, this is the short version. There's a longer version, much more thorough, that walks through lots of um, different uh, elements that we will present in class and uh, parsing out a little bit further. But this is the quick, uh, fast view. Um, so just uh, to start out, we're going to look at the basic documentary process. Um, and so this is what your class, uh, your students will be doing. They will be researching, they will be writing a script, they will be uh, storyboarding with sounds and images, and then they will be recording. So that is the main process uh, that they will work through. Um, and this is for class, um, both uh, your class in the process of uh, preparing before um, any sort of technological trainings. Um, so concept development, it could be that you present the um, concept of the assignment or the topics um, or the overview in class before I or one of my colleagues come in. Um, and then when we come in to give the general intro of the video project, looking at uh, exemplary examples of um, uh, other student work that we think the students can produce, um, then they might have a better concept of or, or be able to brainstorm a little bit better um, of how they would approach it themselves with their own topic. It's not required that they have a topic in hand when I come in, um, but it sometimes does help uh, get that brainstorming and um, creative juices flowing. Um, but also in concept development, I could come in and do interview skills, um, and we also discuss writing narration and just general pre-production planning. Um, and we like to do that session differently or, or separately. So that doesn't have to be very long, 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, depending on like questions and things like that. Um, so it doesn't have to be a full class, but it, it does help to have that first. And then we, we do the equipment training later. Um, again, you don't have to have all of these elements. So don't feel overwhelmed. These, this is, uh, this could be a very small project. It could just be um, a couple images um, and, a, and a narration and that's it. And it can be extremely compelling and uh, thoughtful and engaging. Um, but it could be a much larger project and if you want the students to go out and shoot their own footage um, a lot of our environmental studies classes have done this they really want to be on location for certain things or they're interviewing folks um, you know expert testimony we might need to teach some equipment training as well. So that is a possible other training in there. Um, and then we come back and we do editing um, software training. And so this is critical to do right before they are actually going to edit. So not a month uh, in advance because they will forget how to use it. Same way with the equipment, um, trying to really uh, organize that in the schedule to ensure that they're learning it and then they're actually using it right away so they don't um, lose that knowledge. Um, and then finalizing, um, figuring out one-on-one -on -one feedback from you or me, um, looking at the refinement, possibly an in-class critique if this is a larger project, uh, having maybe a one-minute um, submission um, and having the class look at that before they work through further. Um, so that is a quick overview of how we might um, get together. Uh, some things to uh, consider for grading elements. Um, so I'm going to go into a rubric in a minute. Um, but looking at the content, contents number one, a large percentage of the grade comes from the content and the quality and extensiveness of research, um, delivery, how they organize um, their content as, and then how it flows, how they, um, uh, how they have decided to transition um, the information. Um, the narrative itself, uh, whether they present material in a compelling and an interest, interesting um, or a commonplace and uninteresting way. So really trying to think of how them, how they are uh, presenting this and is it the same as some other video somewhere else or, or have they really um, uh, brought new analysis or, or coupled different concepts together in a creative and interesting way? relevance? Does it uh, connect with uh, the overarching themes of your course? Um, and and is it aligning with what your expectations are? Uh, the technical is an important part. It's not like it's a it's a it's number one, um, but it's like anything else. I mean, um, we do expect them to uh, take the the basic understanding of what makes a compelling and successful video. Um, so making sure that the right mic is chosen. I mean, that's very simple to learn how to do. But if the wrong mic is chosen, it might sound like they're recording in a bathroom or a trash can, and it's just not successful in that way. So can we hear them? Is there music that's too loud over their voices? Um, uh, are images, for instance, a, a graph or a map, uh, did they get a high quality image so you can actually see the detail? Because if it's, if it's not effective, if you can't actually see what you're, what the, what they're trying to present, then it's not successful. So um, the technical elements um, do come into play and, and should be weighed at least 
you know, a small portion. And then group work if it is a group project. Um, and again, um, considerations for group work uh, are something that you will have to, to work through. Um, are students self-creating their groups or are you assigning them? Really thinking about this in advance. Um, having clearly defined roles before the production begins um, uh, so that students know what they're going to what their expectations are. A lot of times I do hear that, oh, this student's really good at, you know, doing editing, so they're going to do most of it. But really, I mean, when you're looking at the rubric and you're looking at, um, you know, content, everyone needs to be part of the content creation. Um, and so ensuring that everyone has put the time into the research and the analysis and, and really building that narrative um, is, is important. Um, uh, and then having a group critique, having group critique each other's work in progress, um, uh, thinking about an in-class critique, um, either just within the group or the whole class. Um, and then again, looking at group evaluations to ensure that the students um, feel like they have a voice and that, uh, you know, it could be a private um, either survey or in, in person, uh, but they, they do have the ability of, of giving some feedback on how the group project itself worked. I know that this is sort of small um, and we can submit uh, an example to you, um, but in general this is, you know, a sample rubric that aligns with those grading elements. So content in this one is 50%. Um, uh, the relevance to the themes in the class are, um, are uh, 20%, so, um, you know, making sure that it connects with what uh, your expectations are. Um, delivery, so again we talked talk about organization and flow. Um, and again, that's only 10%. The technical polish for this one, they also had as 10%. Um, and, and so again, like, uh, really parsing out what, what that looks like, sounds like. Um, and then on this one, there's also a wow factor. So you don't necessarily have to have that, but there might just, you know, when you see a compelling and informative and engaging video, sometimes you can't pinpoint exactly what it was that just made it so, uh, so impressive. So um, a wow factor was was something that this professor um, added in. But you can um, you know adjust that, remove that, add the percentages. You know, weigh different things, um, heavier or lighter. Uh, media and equipment. So we have a lot of different equipment. The key here is that you don't have to necessarily know what you're looking for. You and myself or my colleagues will discuss what your expectations for the project. Uh, is. And so um, if they do have to record something, it could just be that they're using their phones, could be that they have to check things out, um, but just ensuring that they have the right equipment to capture whatever they need to make a compelling and strong argument. Um, and so uh, we will work with the media center uh, to ensure that we know what the students will be coming in for. Um, so this is not something that you have to be an expert on, but we will, we will work with you and your class to ensure that everything um, is prepared. And so a quick look at the pre-semester planning. Um, so we will get together uh, you will get together with your academic technology liaison, um, share your syllabus. If you have a draft assignment or if you have an assignment that you're trying to um, rework, maybe it was a research paper and you're thinking of changing something. Um, so uh, submitting any of that to us in advance is super helpful, but at least during the consultation, um, uh, we'll discuss what your anticipated person percent of final grade would be. And then we're going to try to align that with the um, with how long the project should be. So we generally never, uh, you know, assign a 15 minute video. Um, you know, an eight to 10 minute video is a pretty substantial project and, you know, will account for a large percent of the grade. So, um, so trying to just make sure that these things match. Uh, looking at the semester schedule, um, you know, also looking at what you can devote to in-class sessions for student support. Um, a video project's uh, extremely important to have at least two sessions, um, even for the smaller projects. Um, and so uh, if you can't, um, out, you know, add that space in, um, then the success of the project for the students um, is not as likely. So we really want to do this uh, to ensure that the students feel supported and feel successful and feel like they have all of the um, elements and um, resources that they need to, to make a, a compelling argument and a successful video project. Um, so the two that are um, recommended for all video projects are an intro, best practices, examples. Um, so we will show um, you know, just some small portions of examples, really looking dissecting different elements of a video and what worked and what didn't and why it did um, as well as uh, you know brainstorming you know concepts and creative thinking and and looking at different um, styles of, of the video um, 
uh, process uh, or, or outcomes. Um, and then uh, a video editing training. So that's also obviously recommended for all to it. So everyone, um, not that students don't know how to edit, but sometimes they don't necessarily know how to use a, a video editing program to really work through especially a larger project and really organize all of their content and think um, think about how they're going to uh, start from the beginning and, and um, uh, add all these different elements, videos, images, audio, um, all that. Uh, and then uh, sometimes we do a one minute draft in class critique, like I said, um, an open lab session um, can also be an option. And then sometimes we do an in class film viewing. I mean, everyone likes to see what they've they've produced and it's a it's a successful, fun time. Um, also, we will work together to prepare resources. We have some general public domain, copyright free images, video sound, um, but there might be something very specific for your topic. So I can um, look up additional ones that uh, really align with with your um, course content. Um, fair use guidelines for education. You can use copyrighted materials, so we'll discuss that just enough um, to make sure that the students know that they can't just go take anything and use it. Um, and then your uh, bibliography expectations for the media resources so the students know how to capture all of, all of the um, locations that they have been um, sourcing their materials. Um, and a quick look at the possible semester schedule. Again, these are not all necessarily needed, but um, uh, the intro training, um, a draft script due, a storyboard due, equipment training, editing training, um, a you know X minute of clip, draft clip due um, with a possible in-class critique, um, possible open work se session, and then the final project due. So again, uh, a much larger project might have all of those. A much smaller project wouldn't um, have everything. But even so, a draft script due, a storyboard due, these are helpful elements even if they aren't graded. Again, it's making the students work through the process, um, you know, step-by-step -step scaffolding to make sure that they um, have prepared, thought through things um, critically. So when they are getting to the editing portion, they have um, a roadmap, they have a guide, they have the research. Um, so that's an important part of the, uh, of the process. Um, so thank you so much. Uh, we can chat more and uh, you can re watch the larger video if you um, are interested.